What's up everybody? Once again, it's Brand Man Sean and today we're going over three brand keys for the Suicide Boys. Shout out to Rayer for making this request. If y'all don't know the Suicide Boys, they're two cousins from Nylons. They're rappers and they've been killing the game for a good little minute now. So let's get into number one. The Suicide Boys are extremely consistent in creating this grimy feeling, this grimy world for people to enter and associate with them in their brand. We're talking about from using black and white a lot of times to also just using duller color palettes. But even as successful as they are, knowing that they have some money to put towards it, they use that low quality, snowy, feel in their visuals. And this goes alongside their actual beat choices where they're using a lot of that distortion and just an entire low quality feel, grimy feel that matches. And they do this on every single layer, almost in a meticulous manner. And this is why they're able to stand out when they do it. They do this flawlessly throughout every single touch point, like I said, from their music their Instagrams, their videos, even their voices sometimes. That consistency on all ends allows them to create a three-dimensional universe for fans to enter and also allows fans to know exactly what they're gonna get when they come to this artist. Number two, their authenticity, particularly when it comes to drug and rock culture. If you listen to them, it's no surprise for me to say they do a lot of drugs because they constantly do talk about it, but the perspective that they speak from is not one of, hey, this is cool, you should do it. It's, this is my personal experience and this is how I acted in that experience. They don't necessarily even try to attach any kind of message, good or bad, to it. They just depict what they're doing in those moments. And because they do that, people who are going through those same things, some are struggling with addiction, some are doing it recreationally, both sides though are able to relate and a lot of times say, wow, I was in that exact position. I know exactly what he was talking about. And then when I talk about the rock culture or the punk rock culture, when you look at them and just take in their world and how they present themselves and constantly act, in comparison to a lot of these other rappers these days who are getting into the whole rock thing because it's cool and it's a trend, it seems extremely authentic to them. They don't really seem to be trying hard or pushing it. I'm into this band and I'm different this way and I was the weird kid. They don't even go so far as pushing themselves too hard that way. They're just them and it's clear and you feel it. Which is a huge thing I personally love about it. As a matter of fact, if I'm not mistaken, Ruby was in a punk rock band. And no, I didn't realize, for those of you who don't know, I didn't mention that the two members are Ruby the Cherry and Scrim. But anyway, once again, they are super authentic when it comes to how they speak on drugs and their participation in the rock with the moshes and all. And me personally, I love all that stuff, except for the moshes. You know, where I come from, it doesn't really end too well. You know, you push me too hard. Now nah, I gotta beat your ass, bro. Number three, their style of rapping. Nobody really raps like them in today's era. Some people might try to mistake them as a sped up version of Amigo style, but not at all. They're really an evolution of 3-6 Mafia style. And they've actually mentioned 3-6 Mafia as people that they love growing up several times. It's the triplet style but they've even evolved that to be their own thing where it's not literally a copy. Once again, it's an evolution. And that helps them stand out and adds to getting something unique when you listen to them as artists that you're not gonna get from somewhere else. And that's one of their main focuses. You don't see them doing a lot of this crazy stuff and being out there like a lot of the other artists. They're not out there as far as FaceTime like a lot of these artists doing some of these stupid things that a lot of these artists do. They said themselves they have one focus which is making really good music and in the long term it's probably going to give them a far stronger brand to propel themselves into mainstream if they want to because their fan base is going to be real and their music is going to be something that can be listened to over a long period of time and in this business you got to play the long game anyway that's it y'all know what to do hit that subscribe button